The sky darkened. Lighters lit the street lamps. Young people wearing masks approached the tavern. Against the flow of people, Isaac and Irene walked in the opposite direction. Away from New Bedford, Irene felt only love when taking Isaac's hand. At the water's edge, a shooting star temporarily lit the cold, starry sky. Suddenly animated, Irene clutched Isaac's hand. Isaac said, it can't possibly be. This is just how it happened before, years ago. It's time, somehow, repeating. Irene swelled with desperation, longing, and hope. Seizing the opportunity presented to her, Irene whispered, perhaps love is timeless. All love is timeless. Again, Isaac sidetracked. I wonder what ship that is, Irene. Could it impossibly be the Aurora out of Milford? Irene remained silent and held Isaac's hand with an unchanging grip. Isaac searched for words, but no words could save him from his heart. His soul cried out, beckoned him to kiss Irene. Lit only by distant lamplights and the more distant light of the stars, their breath was momentarily visible before ascending to the heavens. Their breathing became one, two bodies with one soul and one breath. Their lips touched. Irene teared up. Isaac pulled Irene closer to him, breast to chest. An uncontrollable gush of desire swelled up and flooded them both. No, Irene, forgive me. Isaac gently pushed her away, denying every fiber in his being. Irene, I will not take advantage of you. With her patience taxed like never before, Irene bowed her head, stepped away, and then looked back at Isaac straight into his soul. Oh, Isaac, I'm so alone. Isaac shook his head, confused. You must have a thousand men, all better than me, pursuing you. How can you, the most sublime of all women, be alone? You could have anyone. Irene took Isaac's hand. If 10,000 men sang at my balcony and not one of them was you, I would be alone. You're the only man for me. I waited for you before I ever knew you. After we met, I waited again. Usually affirmative and direct, Isaac shied away. Don't you see? How could I take advantage of the most beautiful woman, the most beautiful soul I have ever known? Upset, Irene squeezed Isaac's fingers hard in hers. I love you, Isaac. The woman who could never love, loves you. For the first time in my life, I despise my flesh and relish it all at once. I wish we could be thrown into a cauldron and melted into one body. At the same time, I love being apart from you, desiring what our bodies make impossible in this world. But damn it, let's try. Isaac clenched with desire but shut his eyes. One day, Isaac, I will enjoy bringing your children into this world, and you will thoroughly enjoy me while we're making them. Isaac was ripped apart by thoughts he couldn't accept. But Irene, her finger went to Isaac's lips. Shushing him, she said, forget all the things you consider sinful. Your only sin is that you're human. You are more human than anyone I've ever known. Be like your mom. I love you beyond all earthly sin. And who is to say that God, in a wisdom far beyond ours, didn't send us to each other and to this very moment?